I'm back. And here we go. I'll be continuing the series of my top 100 board games. And we are now going um, from 80 to 71. With no further ado, uh, number 80 was 58 last year, and that is Carcassonne. Carcassonne is a um, interesting one because I used to think this was a fantastic uh, welcoming game, gateway game, whatever you want to call it. I'm not so sure anymore because I feel like people can get frustrated with the rules for farmers. They can get frustrated with the rules for um, cities. Um, I should talk about the game. You have all these little tiles. Um, we'll see, this way if I show you the game, I don't feel like I need to go online and find a picture and do it. But you're building a, you're building a landscape with all these little tiles that kind of work together with a puzzle. And that's very appealing to people because people love puzzles. Um, I think it's a really good game. I think it's better without too many expansions. Lish goes. Um, and yeah, still really fun. I don't really play it that much anymore, but fantastic tile laying game. That is uh, Carcassonne. Um, I should play it more than I do. Number 79 is a game that was 67 last year, so pretty close. This is Inuit. Um, which this is a game that uh, technically is Amy's, is my wife's, um, and she bought it because the artwork is beautiful, because it's pretty. Um, that actually worked out in this case. It doesn't always. Um, oh, this is this one's an interesting list, by the way, the top ten, because I own all ten of these, um, which is rare until you get up to the top, like, 20 or so. Um but in this game, you're hunting polar bears. You're you're recruiting people for your tribe. You are playing an Inuit tribe, and it's a it's kind of like a you are building your tribe, and you can build them in several different ways, and it works really well. Um, it's a little fiddly at times with knowing the strategy, but you build, you put your, you assign people jobs, and then you can get various cards based on what those job, how many of those people you have. So if you have three seal hunters, you can get three seals from the middle. Um, goes very quickly, especially once people know it. Um, there's a couple expansions that come in the game that I think are fine, um, but yeah, it's one of those games that Amy bought because it's pretty, but this one actually worked out. They don't always. Um, but good call on that one. Um, number 78. Um, this is another game I got to talk about. Amy. This is Bananagrams, which if you see my our copy here, it still has her maiden name there um, because she owned this game before we were married, um, as did I. We eventually gave away my copy. Um, but Bananagrams is speed solitaire. Uh, it's not solitaire, Speed Scrabble. So you have all these little tiles, and you can spell words with these little tiles. Um, and you spell them in a grid. Um, it's, I hate Scrabble. Hate is too strong a word. I dislike Scrabble. Making a speedy game, like Bananagram just does, makes it fantastic. It's a good two-player game, good with like five or six as well. Um, if you haven't tried this one, this is one that um, even people who don't like board games normally would probably like Bananagrams as long as they have a decent, um, if they, as long as they're able to spell decently. Um, that's Bananagram 78 this year, was 63. Number 77 was 64 last year, and that is Jaipur. Jaipur is a trading game, um, but it's in the it's a trading game with only it's a two player only game, um, which is interesting because normally you don't have those. But the way it works is you'll have cards in the middle of the table, and then you have to take a certain amount of them, and then you can trade them in. So let's say I have these four gold cards, I could trade them in for four of these little gold tiles that are worth victory points. Whoever has the most victory points at the end wins. Um, there's a decent amount of luck with, uh, you know, if you take one card and then one of the very valuable cards comes out that your opponent can take. But there's also a lot of skill involved, and you can become much better at this game. Um, this is a really good two-player only game. Um, not the best on my list, but may not the highest on my list, I should say. But higher than Lost Cities, because I've already gone over Lost Cities. 
Um, this might be the highest one that's two player only and is like very simple, very easy. Um, highly recommend it if you haven't checked it out. That's Jaipur. Number 76 is new to the list. This is um, Eight Minute Empire Legends. Um, I played this game at a game group in the area that's actually pretty close to my house. I went there once. I don't know that I'll go back. It was fine. Um, but played some good games and with some good people. I don't mean to denigrate um, that group. But um, this game is an area control game that is supposedly able to play in eight minutes. Now, that's not actually true. Like, once you know what you're doing, it'll take you probably 15 minutes. Um, but that's impressive. Uh, it, you play it with three or four people, and you have oh, fantastic colors in these games, too. Like, look at that teal, purple, white's okay, but dark gray, very nice. Um, there's these cards that come out that allow you to do various different things. So you take this night village, you get to place one of your cities. You take this, and you just take a certain number of them based on how many people are playing. So you, maybe you, you're taking three cards, uh, or sorry, not three cards. So you take one card a turn, and um, so and you're conquering these little islands. Maybe four islands out there, and maybe you you take a total of ten turns. You do what's printed on each card that you take, and then the game's over, and you score points. It theoretically could be played in eight minutes. I, I someday will have to try that. Um, but in, for a filler game, this has a lot of depth. My filler filler is a term that people use when they're like, oh, well, if someone else is coming, so let's just uh, play a quick game. Um, sometimes that can be used as like, ah, a quick game, I won't be very good. This is a really good game. I really enjoy it. So that's uh, Eight Minute Empire Legends. Um, also worth of noting, this is by Ryan Lockett. Um, I... Still haven't played Near and Far, which is one of his more famous games. Um, really need to play that one because that one's probably going to be pretty high on my list. Number 75 was 56 last year. This is Sushi Go Party. Um, this game, it says it plays two through eight players. I would submit to you it's actually like four to eight. I wouldn't play with, uh, with less than that. But um, if you've played Sushi Go, this is the better version with lots of different um, card options. And you have all these tiles that tell you what you could be playing with. Edamame, dumplings, eel. Um, it's a card drafting game. Um, so that means on your turn, you take one card from your hand. Um, so maybe you take this dumpling, you put it face down. Um, I say turn, but everybody's taking turns at the same time. And then you all flip up the cards at the same time. Um, you then get the points listed on it. So the dumpling, you get a certain number of points based on how many of them you have. And like all the rules for how the cards works are printed on the cards themselves, as well as on the board. This is a fantastic welcoming game. Um, people can really get into this, especially the theme, because uh, you know, you're, people like sushi. Um, I, I can't eat sushi. Um, but, um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. This is essentially... Some people say that the game Seven Wonders, which, yes, is higher on my list, um, is a good welcoming game. No, it's not. Um, because you cannot grasp what the symbols mean immediately. This, you don't need to worry about the symbols because it's written on the card how they work. So you're like, oh, I know exactly how that works. And then you can make choices. Plays really quickly. Plays up to eight. It's fun with eight. Doesn't take you know that much more time because it's a drafting game. Um, so yeah, that's Sushi Go Party. This one's probably going to take longer, I guess, because I'm opening all these games and showing them to people. Okay, number 74 is new to the list. I had not played it last time, and this is uh, Irish Gage, which is a train game, which is a genre that I'm not usually that into. I've played uh, Steam. I used to own Railways of the World, or Railroad Tycoon, I think it was called. Um, but in Irish Gage, you are building track and investing in companies over the Isle of Ireland. And it's nice hexes right there, which are nice. And you start building these little trains all over the map. Um, you got these uh, interesting trains. You are not the colors, though, because you are investing in the stock of the various different companies. So you might... 
send a, you might focus on a different company than someone else. You might invest in several different companies. Um, it sounds really complicated and it's not. Uh, this is essentially what the designer did was take the concept of um, 18xx games or like railroad games and condense it into its simplest version. It works. It works really well. Um, I think it's better. I've played it. It says three to five. I haven't played it with three. I played it with four and with five. I think it's better with five than with four. Um, but yeah, impressive game. Uh, that's Irish Gage. <sighs> okay, so I haven't looking forward to this one. Number 73 was 51 last year. Um, I have to tell a story about this. Um, so we were moving from our first apartment after my wife and I. And she was like looking through boxes and she opened this box and she was like, Kyle, what is this? So <clears throat> this is the box, you know, nondescript box. Open it up. This is Heroscape, the battle for all time. I didn't realize I have something still in plastic. I have not played this game. Look at all this plastic goodness. I haven't played this game since well before I got married. Um, and one of the reasons is, look at all this plastic terrain. It can take forever to set this game up because you're essentially building a Lego set of the landscape and then playing with all these dudes. So, and you got all these pre-painted minis. So these ones are uh, these little monks and these little Valkyrie dudes. Um, this one's a bunch of different heroes, including like this Wild West guy, some more Valkyries, a Scotsman, um, some other Scotsman, and some like uh, futuristic agents. Um, you even got some bigger ones. Here's an orc riding a dinosaur. Come on. Classic dragon with, there's another wing in there somewhere that I can attach. Oh, here's another big one. Oh, it's another work on a dinosaur. I I have a lot of expansions for this, so I threw away the base box a long time ago. Uh, there's a toothbrush in here. I don't know why that's in there. I don't even remember this one. It's some sort of agent lady. This game is crazy. It takes forever to set up, and it's honestly mostly just a luck fest of rolling a bunch of dice, but it's so fun. It is so fun. I need to get this out this year. So whoever's watching this and wants to play this game with me, let me know. I will play it. Um, I'm sure someone's interested. Such a good game. That was Heroes Cave, <laughs> um, number 73. Number 72 is new to the list, and um, I bought this one used, and I've quite enjoyed it. This is Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition. I love Terraform Mars. It's higher on the list. Spoiler alert. Um, this game is like a slightly condensed version of Terraforming Mars. Um, and it takes one of the mechanics from like Puerto Rico, where you select an action and then everybody does that action. So it kind of, it replaces the board with this dinky little board where you just put the oceans there. So it removes a lot of what happens in Terraforming Mars but a lot of the cards are very similar. So it's it's hard to evaluate. Um, also, some of the art is better, people say. I, I don't particularly care, but there's wave power. Um, it's hard to evaluate because I've only played this game with two people. I think it's going to be much better with three or four. Um, it's doing well for what it's worth because there's three expansions on Kickstarter right now. Um, I definitely like the base game better, and I don't think playing with more people is going to change that. But I find this game really interesting. Um, it's also very interesting to play a game where you know the other game that it's based on really well, um, but it's a different game. Anyway, um, need to play with three or four. It might move high up next year. Who knows? But that is Terraforming Mars, Ares Expedition. Um, the last game, number 71, was 29 last year, so it's fallen by quite a bit, um, and this is Ticket to Ride New York. So, wow, this, there's three games I'm telling you are higher up on the list. This is just the day of spoilers. Um, Ticket to Ride is higher on the list. I love Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride New York is Ticket to Ride Condensed. 
Um, so here's the entire board, very small. You're just playing your little cars um, on the board. Oh, and there's some good colors here too, because look, you get purple and teal, two of my favorites. Um, so it's a much shorter version of Ticket to Ride. Um, I've come to the understanding that I, I, th I think that that's a little bit more problematic than I originally believed it was. And by that, I mean luck is a much bigger factor in this game than it is in Ticket to Ride. Um, so a lot of what I really like about Ticket to Ride comes through in this, but not far enough for it to be an extremely high up game on my list. Um, yeah, that being said, still a fantastic game. Two to four players and plays in 20 minutes. What's it saying here? It says 10 to 15 minutes. That's, um, that's optimistic. But uh, if you like Ticket to Ride, you should check this one out. There's also Ticket to Ride London or Ticket to Ride Amsterdam, which are also smaller games like this. Haven't played those ones. Um, don't know that I need to. Ticket to Ride New York is, is good. It's a fine game. So um, that was 80 through 71. Excited that I had all those games and could show them all to you. That won't happen again until the 20 through 11. Um, and yeah, several new games in there. Um, no deck builders? No deck builders in this top 10. That's crazy. Um, don't worry, there'll be at least one next time. Ooh, actually, it's only one next time, and then you might even argue that it's not a deck builder. That's crazy. That's because the deck builders get, are much higher up, because I love deck building. Anyway, thanks for watching, um, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Bye.